Hey guys, Drive-By Movies is back here with another episode of Sequel. This week, you guys challenged us to do Ex Machina. I'm super excited to get into it. My name is James. My name is Blaze. And let's get into it. Let's get right into it. So, Ex Machina. I love this movie so much. Oh, I'm just fucking up here. But yeah, yeah anyways, I got this movie on 4K. Oh, blu I just wanted to up upsell your yeah. uh, regular blu-ray i see how it is so yeah. haven't even opened it yet yeah. which is a lie because i just opened <laughs> you it. just opened it yeah <laughs> uh have you seen it more than once or just the time you saw it in theaters uh i have only watched it yeah actually the only time i've seen it is in theaters to yeah. be honest i never rewatched it yeah. like i loved it so much i didn't feel like a need yeah. to rewatch it sometimes i yeah. guess it was easy to remember though there, like while it was a complicated like plot it was an easy premise though like yeah. there's a lot going on within the premise but yeah. overall it's very easy to follow but yeah i haven't seen it yet but i did buy it because i did love it that much though mm-hmm. uh but on that black friday sales Ooh. Yeah. yeah so it's uh so the number one thing I, I feel like there's multiple ways to mess up this movie that's what i was so nervous about doing it mm-hmm. like you could go one route easily you can go like a like you could go an action way a thriller way keep it more drama orientated and each way i was trying to think of i like, felt like i kept messing it up mm-hmm. but overall finally i overall wanted to go with the same thing where it's just a psychological thriller with not too many characters Mm -hmm. um there's gonna be more than three characters with this i did like that so much about the first one there's three characters it's easy to follow but overall there's really only one you would follow and it's uh dom hall gleason you would imagine because he Mm -hmm. survives at the end of the movie yeah he's just trapped in that glass box like banging on it like get me out he eventually got out maybe they can bring up a blurb with him in the movie but i don't want him to come back I'm actually bringing back Oscar Isaac, the character with the most pizzazz, I felt like. P-I-Z-Z-A. Uh, he died. His dancing yeah. disco yeah. scene that is, scene is classic. classic. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Just like, she, there, you're wasting your time with her. <laughs> you know what? It wouldn't be wasting your time. Dancing and just playing that music. It just came out of nowhere in the theater. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> but uh, so that scene alone is why I want to bring him back. No, just kidding. No. He's just a great actor. But mm-hmm. how would I bring him back? I want him to come back as an android. So yeah. are we talking like Johnny Depp Transcendence here? Where like I haven't he... seen it. Sorry. Oh, well, the premise, at least. Okay. I didn't see the film either. But the premise is that he like puts himself into like the internet. But like this android, at least, or, or is it really an android? Uh-huh. Or this these robots, I guess, the Machina uh-huh. or whatever. <laughs> Anyways, do, is uh, he gonna be inside the inside the robot, or it, like is it is consciousness, or is it just gonna be like modeled after him and like like I don't know. What? It's modeled after him overall. He mm-hmm. was very one step ahead of everything. Dom Hall Gleason did kind of outsmart him, mm-hmm. but I'd like to think that he always kind of prepared for something going wrong. So it is overall his consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um but he's like the new test subject, like the new Ava essentially. Mm-hmm. He brought in all these volunteers to like kind of watch him and stuff like while they develop like similar androids to him mm-hmm. cuz like he's like the bigger better one now that uh, ava's kind of escaped ava is like overall the top one though because she's the one who outsmarted humans that was like she broke the test that like she was uh-huh. like put into yeah but so he's this newer version model and he always kind of saw something might have gone wrong maybe so that's why he brought in all these new characters um i i don't want to do like more than three i'd say like mm-hmm. uh because we already have uh uh, maybe we could like have up to like five or so but the overall like if i had to pick i would choose scoot mcnary i love that actor i think he's a yeah. great actor very underrated if you haven't seen i mean most people have heard of monsters but also uh in search of a midnight kiss i highly recommend people seeing. is it. there any way to watch that or is that movie yeah, still you have to buy it on amazon and it's a blockbuster exclusive dvd so yeah you're <laughs> only you can only buy a used copy are you looking for that dvd like just in your life are you gonna try and get it eventually yeah <laughs> i could buy it on amazon but that's cheating i like to find you it in like the wild. to find it yeah in the wild in the wild <laughs> you're like a hunter and yeah. <laughs> uh so with him being the main character though so overall i imagine these people i forget the name of the company it's called like blue something uh blue book i think is what it's called or mm-hmm. something like kelly's that. blue book i yeah. think that's the company is that re- really it yeah. no that's a car Craigslist oh, okay. company yeah. that's what <laughs> so i thought they... i was like that sounds like the actual blue book <laughs> car model thing um so overall i imagined uh, a bunch of people volunteered to be these test subjects for uh nathan oscar oscar isaac but this new 
we'll call him uh, Nathan One or something, or uh-huh. Nathan for you. <laughs> He's called Nathan for you. Yeah. The number the four, number four the, letter the letter U. U. Yeah, Nathan for you. That's what we'll call him from now. <laughs> uh, so Nathan for you is testing on them, or uh, testing them to see like if they can like pass this test like if he can pass the same test that ava endured like the turing test yeah but he's the one who's conducting it but he's conducting it on himself (laughs) with like real humans essentially and kind of spoilers already but the plot twist already is going to be that all these volunteers they did volunteer as humans but they don't know that they are androids right now like they volunteered there was an exact perfect replication of them into an android and they Mm -hmm. think that they're still being like that they have their overall entire mindset but bitch no (laughs) yeah they they were fake the whole time yeah (laughs) so i like what you have going here and i like the idea that um i forget what's oscar isaac's character's name Uh, his name is nathan uh nathan's nathan i like the idea that his like i'm just gonna call them replicants fuck it we saw blade runner this weekend so i'm like i'm in that world okay uh so like his because they're not androids like androids have human body parts still so they're they're more like replicants or droids i guess droids robots whatever anyways these robots they like are taking on memories that he's had it's not necessarily him like it's not his consciousness it's taking on his memories and like going forward as that person right so it, it essentially is him but it's not but when it comes to these people that volunteered to like do these tests yeah they're basically being replaced essentially right. by these droids that have their memories but mm-hmm. aren't necessarily them exactly, and they're yeah. and their same exact consciousness so it's like a robot's consciousness now with the memories that the humans past life had mm-hmm. so i like that idea because i was wondering like you know when you think about robots is it is it going to be like a consciousness thing where you transfer your consciousness to this Mm -hmm. new vessel or is it like something like this i don't really know how to explain it necessarily other than like it's like if it's kind of like a clone essentially like if you cloned yourself the clone's not necessarily going to be you yeah i don't know no no, it's it's an interesting way to look at it i i like it uh I think it's a it's a cool idea. Yeah. I'd the, be interested more to see like where the tests are gonna go and like what necessarily is the outcome. Like, is this like kind of a, a contest between these multiple people that mm-hmm. volunteered or what? To see which is the best and yeah. or a replicant. Yeah, uh, overall they would the, be different yeah. versions essentially. Yeah. Or the scene to thank for this movie though was or the to thank for this concept was the scene where Dom Hall Gleason. Uh, He's like starting to question like whether or not he's real. Like he, I don't know if you remember, but he goes into a bathroom and slits yeah. his own wrist. That's what like uh, that's my favorite scene in the movie, just because it's so simple. Yet you're just starting to wonder like you know this is like a mind game scenario, mm-hmm. and that's where the whole premise came from. What was your question though again? Yeah, uh, it was basically just like it, are is there going to be are they going to be going against each other competing? Are they actual different model numbers? Mm-hmm. Are they, similar? I did imagine like, what, like, what is the test? What's the end of the test? Yeah. Like, what are the results? Yeah. It's I like wish I thought that far in advance, but I didn't, but overall I did imagine though, that it was a test between all the people. That's why you're following one specific one. He's going to be the main one that kind of passes the overall test. And just like figuring out that like, he's the smartest most developed one in a way Mm -hmm. i guess like he was he's the first one to become Mm self-aware and everything yeah interesting i think you you can go back to the books on this and maybe figure out more about where it's going but i like so far Mm -hmm. so far the idea that you have yeah um but i dig it yeah count me in Mm -hmm. sequelized yeah uh, I guess it's time to challenge you now for next week. Uh, I know that lately you've been watching the Harold and Kumar awesome franchise. Real quick, I just want to say, if you haven't seen any of the Harold and Kumar movies, you might say, oh, those are just stupid stoner movies. Those don't know what they're... They're just like American Pie. They're just a dumb teenager movie. Mm-hmm. You might say that. But go reevaluate your life. Mm-hmm. Because these movies were so far ahead of the game. And then also, it's things that people talk about today, like people praise these these films. They're like, oh, this has a person of color in a lead role. Like, mm-hmm. hey, 
didn't we already do this? Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to be like, this already happened and no one praises these movies. I'm not saying like you should praise those things, but I'm saying like when you mention that, Mm -hmm. you should also mention what already came before and like is actually like, look Mm -hmm. at Night of the Living Dead. You know, there's a person of color in a lead role in that Mm -hmm. movie. Like people don't think about like what's actually been done before. They're just thinking about like what's coming out next. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's like these movies are so ahead of its time. The first one is still relevant today. Uh, second one's a amazing parody of the Bush administration, which is more relevant today since we're in the Trump administration. Right. And the third one, one of the best Christmas movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. anyways, yeah, go ahead. Not as much of a political <laughs> yeah, not as much of a, as a political statement as the first two, yeah, but, but the still third a one's a great Christmas movie. Still a worthy sequel, yeah. Uh, but I don't own the first one. I own the or the third one. Sadly, I own the second one uh, on DVD. I mean, I love all three though. I do need to get. There's all a three. box set that looks like a yeah. White Castle like burger and shit. But it's so good, I had to buy it twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I just have two copies somehow. But yeah, this is gonna be a double XL extra the, large. The Harold and Kumar triple XL. Yeah. Okay, so uh, is this a sequel to Guantanamo Bay where where very Harold and Kumar Christmas didn't exist, where it's going to stay like a political thriller that harkens back to the 70s, yeah. like all the president's men? Honestly, surprise me. Yeah, you can go <laughs> anywhere with this franchise, I feel like. It's like Black Dynamites where anything can go. Yeah. yeah, especially in the second one where there's that like smokeless bong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you have all that technology yeah. to create a smokeless bong and uh-huh. shit? I might even make a crossover movie. We'll see. I'm definitely going to have fun with this one. So get ready next week. Mm-hmm. Pack your bowls. Because <laughs> this one is going is to gonna give you the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was trying to see where I was going to go there, yeah. but you're going to get the munchies. Get ready. Next week, we're going to be talking a sequel to all of the Harold and Kumar movies. Maybe not some of them. Maybe some of the others. Who cares? We'll see. Get ready. Later. Later.